In today's tutorial, what we're going to do is actually put our name in lights. Or, oh, at least we're going to actually spell our name in particles. Hi Blender fans, and welcome once again to Blender TC. And don't forget, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Let's begin. This could be used for many effects like logos and other things you need to do in Blender. So this is a quick and simple tutorial, or maybe not so quick, but it's going to be fairly simple. So what we're going to do first is we're not going to delete our cube, but what we are going to do is set up some things in our scene. Now I wish this was actually turned on by default in Blender, but it isn't. As you can see, I... So what we've got up here is we've got a filter button. By default, most of the filters are turned off. But what I'm going to do is actually turn them all on. And the reason I'm doing this is what it does is going into the fill button makes them appear in this line. If I turn them all off again, you'll see them sort of vanish. So for this tutorial, we're going to turn them all on. And we've got different buttons that do different things. So this one disables or hides things in the viewport. This one hides things in the viewport as well, but it does it globally. And this one here, it dis disables in the render. This will disable things in the render. This one disables it also in the render, but it does it globally. But this one here, it disables it. If we try and render this out now, as you can see, we press the render key and nothing appears because it's defect it's disabled it in the render so I render again and the cube miraculously appears this will be very useful because we want the particles to appear but we don't want the object to appear that's making the particles behave like they are so what we're going to do is we're going to press the s key make sure your caps lock's not on like mine is currently on and i'm just going to scale this down in fact i won't scale it down Control c just to undo uh, I'm just going to press the S key and scale it in the Z to make it into a flat plane and I'm just going to move it Z away from our viewport maybe scale it up slightly because this is going to be what we call our, our emitter and this is where the particles are going to come from so I'm just going to rename the cube into emitter like so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to be using a thing called collections in this but first of all something more on the actual setup we're just going to go into this button here which is the render properties go into EV make sure that uh, EV is on ambient occlusion is on bloom is on that's the thing that gives this its glow that's the actual uh, that's the render viewport and this is how it will look in our render to a certain extent Enable screen space reflections or refractions and also open it up and enable refractions in there as well. This means that things will reflect other things and it will make things sparkle if there's a light in your scene just to actually make things look a bit more real. We're not going to actually, I don't know, motion blur might look good in some circumstances but I'm not going to enable it this time. But it depends on what you want in your animation. So the next thing I'm going to do is add in a mesh. And the mesh I'm going to add in is a cylinder. And I'm just going to scale that cylinder. Scale Z. Because that's going to be our particle, or one of our particles. Zero makes you look through the viewport. And what we're going to do is I'm going to G and Z. 
just to move I'm oh, sorry I'm not going to G and Z I'm going to G and X just to move it along the red line X moves it along the red, red line Y on the green and of course so I've now got my first particle there which I'm going to call particle 1 E A R T 1 I'm then going to duplicate it shift and D Pressing the enter keys to fix it and G and X and I'm going to call that one particle 2 part 2 and making another 2 I'm just going to highlight both of them shift and D G and X so I want 4 particles in this scene so select that one I'm going to call that particle 3 B A R T 3 and I'm going to call the last one particle 4 P A R T 4 the way I'm doing this is actually to double click on there which actually enables me to change the name of those but what you can do is if you actually got an object selected pressing F2 enables you to rename it as well that's entirely up to you how you do that so now we've got our particles but our particles look pretty boring so let's add some colour to them. So I'm going to go into particle 1 and I'm just going to put plus and I'm just going to particle. I'm just adding different ones because depending on what you want your particle to look like, you might want it to be plain, matte or reflective. It's entirely up to you what you want your particle to do. So in this case, I'm going to make particle 1 very metallic, emit a colour. Let's turn the brightness up. Emit a yellow colour. I'm going to make the uh, take the roughness down to zero. And what that does is it makes it. I just zoom in on it. What it does, it makes it reflect light by actually making it metallic and taking the roughness down to zero, which of course will actually reflect the other ones, which also will reflect any light you have pointed at it. I'm going to go into the second one. Do about the same. But I'm just going to. Turn the brightness up and make this a bluey colour. Do the same with this one. What we haven't got here though is I haven't actually given it any emission strength. If we actually give it an emission strength, because we've actually enabled bloom in it, that's in five, makes it glow. If I turned it up to 50, it'd really glow. So depending on what you want your particles to do, but I might keep that at 50 actually, looking at it. Let the blue one do the same. Go into this one, turn the brightness up. Oops, turn the brightness up. Make it red. Make it up to 50. And make me last one. I don't know what colour. See, so we've got a red one, a green one, red one, a blue one. Oh, I better make it green, aren't they? Just a thing. And a yellow one. So these, change it up to 50. And I'm going to make it uh, reflective. Make the green one reflective. Make the red one reflective. I think I've already done the blue. Oh, I haven't. Certainly done the yellow one. Yeah. But you can take the roughness down on these. Which of course will make them more and more reflective. As you can see, they are all now in our viewport. So I'm just going to move that out of the way of my viewport because they're actually affecting my viewport. So, and of course, that of course will affect the render. So, what we've got now is we've got our emitter got our particles but what I want to do is move all these into what I think called a collection and I'm going to call that collection if I just call it all right so go on to my scene right click new collection I think I'll call the collection my particles particles and what I'm going to do is move them all into that collection. 
So what I'm doing there is moving the four particles into that collection, which we will use later on in the tutorial. As you can see, these are outside the viewport, so will not appear on our render. The emitter is not in the viewport. So now we've now set up the emitter. We've set up a collection of particles, and all we need to do is now use them. Let's just create the other things in our scene that we're going to need, which of course is our text. So I'm going to text, create some text, click on the text, make it in the center. I'm then going to, uh, what should I do? I'm going to rotate in the X direction by 90, and I'm going to rotate in the Z direction by 45 degrees, just to make it face us. So I pressed R, then I press Z by 45. The Z key goes from top to uh, the Z axis goes from top to bottom. And if we actually go into this and press the tab key, we can change this to what should I call it? I'll call it my my name is back out of edit mode so i'll just call it my name is and i'm going to give it a bit of thickness by going into the geometry and you can extrude this as long as you want or as short as you want but i'm just going to extrude it just ever so slightly just to give it a bit of thickness and i'm just going to move it g and z up the screen slightly because i want it to appear there and then i'm going to add in some more text and I'm just going to go over exactly the same thing extrude it slightly make it to the center again rotate in the X by 90 the X is on the red line rotate in the Z by 45 degrees just to make it that shape and I'm just going to put blender and tap to get me out right. now as you can see the text has now appeared in my particles that's because we didn't select another collection before we actually created them so go into that collection and what I'm going to do is grab that text and move it into the top collection this is important because you don't want it to be in the particle collection because this will drastically slow down your computer when you hit the particle button the collection as you can see my text thing is so i'm just going to rename this so that one is called my name is name is name is and i'm going to change the other text rename Double click in it. The blender TC. It's actually Terry, but that's for this example it's Blender TC. Right, so we've got my name is Blender TC. If you want them to actually appear next to each other, you can put a one in front of them. Just to make them easier to select if you want. And I'm just gonna put a one in front of that one as well it doesn't matter for naming of things but that'll just make them appear next to each other see they're now next to each other so we've got our particle emitter the thing we want it to change into or the things that we want it to change into which is my name is plenty tc and then go back to particles so here comes the fun part what we're going to do is we're going to now select our emitter oh i forgot to do one thing your text at this period of time is fully editable in that you can actually edit it but you cannot add a particle as you can see you've got a particle button up here when it's over the cube because that's a mesh over a name no particle button the reason there's no particle button is because text isn't a mesh so what we're going to do is collect Combine the uh, combine them. What we've got to do is convert these into meshes, 
and the way we do this is quite simply and um, an object uh, blender does it all for you so go into object and you've got a button down here in object right at the bottom and it says convert to mesh and as you can see the particle buttons appeared but there's no little a so you can't edit your text no more so convert the other one convert to mesh and there we have it so we've now got the particle button and what we're going to do is add the particles into our scene so we've got our emitter down here select your emitter and we're going to add a particle system by hitting the particle button here and we're going to put plus as you can see it says particle settings and this is set to a thousand change this to 100 because on a slow computer this will cause you massive problems later on and you can actually just increase it to the particles you desire just before you render it for some reason the particle emitters are very unstable so i would suggest that from time to time you just save your work this really helps you so you don't lose work and on a complex scene that is invaluable well, i'm just going to cancel that right now that lesson's over what we've got now is if we press the space bar as you can see the particles appear from there if i set this to a thousand really starts to make it slow down the computer so i'm just going to keep it to 100. so you've got my particles there i'm going to re rename it and rename the particles to my particles my particles so the particles are now called my particles if we actually look in this selection that's where they are so and then what i'm going to do is go on this one and we're going to say assign the same particles also to that so plus and in this little button just change that to my particles same with that one plus change that to my particles so that means that these three objects are now sharing the same particles but we don't want the actual particles to fall like they are doing so what we're going to do is go into the particles and we're going to change some different things first thing we're going to change is the source we want the particles not to appear in the faces which is one effect we want it to actually appear in the volume this will appear to do nothing but it does it makes things actually appear in the box so which will help us for this tutorial so we've now set that to volume so that's all we do in source so let's shut that back down what we've got in here is we've got um, field weights right we don't want our actual things to fall with gravity so i'm just going to change this to zero so there's no gravity and as you can see our particles now go out there and also gonna i don't want any of the other forces and harmonics and textures and fluid flow and turbulence to actually work on this at all in fact i'll, I'll leave that at one because i don't think it actually hurts our scene but that's what i'm gonna do and as you can see the particles just seem to come from these going out so that's all i'm going to do in field weights so shut that down and the, the other thing we've got is we've got a thing called velocity right i don't want this to have no velocity because i just want them to appear inside the actual cube by name i think so i'm going to take the velocity down to zero that's it down to zero and as you can see the the actual particles just seem to stick in my name my name is which is what i want to actually happen for this tutorial and let's just set some other particle things up so with the actual emitter selected what i'm going to do i want all my particles to actually appear in frame one so the start 
to start in frame one i want them to end in frame one so they all appear in frame one and 50 frames later they, they actually end i don't want them to end 50 frames later i want them to end 250 frames later or the length of my animation whatever it may be so there we are so the the actually particles appear to be doing absolutely nothing now which is ideal for our particle spelling of my name right so let's set some more stuff up so we've got the cube there and what we're going to do is we're going to go into a thing called hmm, physics i believe right so we're going to physics and what we've got in here we've got Newtonia, uh, Boyd, which makes things do really weird and wonderful things. I wonder around your text and things like that, but the basically they're all following the first one that were created. But we're not covering that in this tutorial. What we're covering in this tutorial is a thing called Keyed. So I'm going to hit Keyed. That appears to do nothing, but what it has done is actually switched on another little button down here oh, i forgot to actually put on rotation but i'll do that in a minute right so we've got key down here and we've got relation so what i want to do is actually go into relation press the plus key and what i'm going to select is the emitters first then i'm going to select putting the plus key in then my name is I'm putting the plus key, Blender TC, and then putting the plus key again, and back to the emitter. So if we actually go to the front of the animation, just going up, going to the second word, and going back down to the bottom. All right. The, other, the only thing is that what we've got here, because we actually switched on our filters earlier on, we can now disable these in the viewport and disable this in in the render. So now what's happening, and do the same with my name is. As you can see, it's going up there, attempting to spell, spell the word, and then back down again. But you can't really see it. And the reason you can't see it is because there's not enough particles. So what I'm going to do now is set up the actual collection so we can use these as our particles. What you do for this is we, we can actually shut these all down because they actually if you open too many windows it just actually confuses things. I'm going to actually select rotation because I'd like these discs to actually rotate and reflect the light and so rotation randomness right at the top and random phase right somewhere around there so just basically make things spin out that's all what i'm going to do is actually with that selected i'm going to go into a thing called render and what i'm going to do is select in the render as you've got halo You've got line, path, object, and you've also got collection. And collection is what we need to use. So press the collection, and the instance for the collection is my particles, which of course that collect that's the collection we created earlier. My particles, and we want them to be picked at random. So if now we press the actual space bar, as you can see. now my particles the scales a bit wrong so what I'm going to do is actually put random scale in as you can see they seem to be twinkling slightly that's because they're reflecting different light but of course they're a little bit too big still so I'm just going to point zero two make them shrink even smaller like so and here comes the fun part of our tutorial what we've got here is we've got my particles got the particles there 
So if we go back into the emission, instead of 100 particles, let's make it 1,000. That seems to spell my name is a little bit better. But turn it up to 10,000. It really spells it out. I've got quite a fast computer. I wouldn't suggest you maybe go up as high as this, but I'm changing mine to 20,000 particles. So as you can see, it spells Blender TC. Hey, up, Fizz. That's my cat just coming. Just get a bit closer to the. I think my particles may be a bit bright, so I'm just going to tone them down a little bit. You do that by going back into the colour. And you can actually take the roughness down. Or maybe take it down to 40. Or all of them. Just to see what that does. Looks a bit bright to me, that. Got it. And that's basically it. Um, you've actually put your name in lights. I'm just going to render this out just to actually see what it looks like. Especially if some of your things, particles, are idly reflected. I want some blue twinkles there. So that should make blue twinkles because what I've done is turn the roughness down to zero. So basically I've got blue mirrors in there. And of course, you could actually add an HDRI to your scene. See if I added a dark one. You HDRI from HDR Haven. Link my in the bottom of that tutorial. I'm not linking bottom of tutorial. I think it's on my main page. But all right, so added this starry night to it. Render that, see what it looks like. I'm not sure I like the purple. And the only thing left to do, obviously, is render our scene out. So let's just go onto the render. Select you where you want your scene to be actually put. That's where I've created this scene. Uh, give it a name. Obviously, I'm going to call this uh, My Name Is. Is but one my name is one and a dash except what you want to do is make sure that this file format is not changed to ping because the ping format what that will do is actually put loads and loads of different pictures which you've got to stitch together which can be done quite easily but that's another tutorial but what I want to do is I'm just going to do ffmpeg just actually do it as an animation and I'm just going to actually render this out so render render animation and this might take some time of course if you find this tutorial uh, interesting and uh, informative please subscribe to my channel or consider subscribing 80% of people are not subscribing yet if you can make that up to 20% then I'll get to a thousand subscribers in no time and I'll help more people because that Will make it appear in more searches which of course will make it actually grow and help grow my channel and pass my knowledge to other people i'm just going to make it a little bit more golden so i'm just going to take that one up to two because i want it to look a bit more yellowy 12. all right as you can see we've actually done this animation but it's a little bit boring so let's make it a bit more interesting right so we've got my name is there and we've got the field weights and we've got the viewport and all that kind of thing uh where is it physics right if you go into the actual physics part of this and we've got key keyed and we've got relations what we're going to do is we're going to make it so my name is blender tc is say it's three times as long on the screen and maybe spins round as well so 
let's just go back to that so I'm going to create this again so I'm going to put plus and my target and I'm going to put blender TC and this enables you to move things up and down your stack so I've created it I'm creating another one make it blender TC because that appears three times in the stack and that means it'll appear three times as long so if we actually play our animation we go my name is blender TC there for three times as long but that's still quite boring isn't it so let's just go up to there what I'm doing is holding down my arrow key so it goes to where I want it to go so it looks like blender TC appears about there so that's about 100 frames or 101 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to press with that selected at 101 frames what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this object here so where it is it's blender TC so go into this object make it reappear because what I want to do is be able to select it and I'm going to set a key from which is I lock rotation and scale and I'm going to take it about 60 frames things which would be two seconds so take it to 160 about 160 which is about there and then I'm going to rotate that rotate in the Z direction by 360 degrees press the I key again so what I've done there is I've now rotated it by 360 so if we run our animation from the beginning as you can see the particle will jump up into there blender TC my name is goes into the blender TC the blender TC will rotate when it gets to 100 frames and back down there we go and back down so goes up there so 160 so if I take this so it stops rotating at 160 if I take it on another 30 frames or another 10 frames let's see what I can do is you've got a thing called velocity up here so let's just go to velocity open velocity and what I'm going to do is I to insert a keyframe there so, so press the I key while you're over over there we set that to zero you can tell it's set because it's it um, goes yellow and I'm just going to take it on back into me viewpoint take it on two four five six seven whatever you want to do however many frames you want to do and you can actually change this to a one or a bigger number as you want but one works quite well press the i key again and if we hide this now just so we can see it what we see is that i'll make it for all right as you can see it's made it a bit more interesting so if we actually take it up as you can see it goes up my name is blender tc spins it round breaks up the particles a bit boom boom smash smash and then lets them fall back down to the base let's just render that just to see what that looks like render animation right the only thing we haven't done we don't want it to overwrite our second first animation so go into there and change the name from my name to my name too because you don't want it to overwrite your first animation make sure that's still set to ffmpeg and render animation
and this is just going to render it again and i think this will be a bit more interesting it might even sparkle the only problem is we uh, rendering is that uh, although eve is quite real time it's still not completely real time so you can't really you don't really know what you've got until you actually render i'd love to have a really fast computer which uh, do it in real time i could turn everything up to the maximum maybe one day